In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Hello, friends. I'm Ingeotis Amicus, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, I understand that it, it, it has been a while since I've last uploaded a video. Um, life gets in the way, work gets in the way, especially. Um, it's been uh, very hectic in the realm of healthcare. Not necessarily because of the pandemic, but more so the burnout associated with the pandemic. Um, I don't, I myself haven't reached a critical mass burnout wise, but there are many nurses and many other healthcare workers who have reached their critical mass, who, while they are maintaining their certifications and licenses, um, have decided that they're getting out of the rat race, so to speak, um, which leaves, uh, which leaves facilities at a massive disadvantage. Um, it leaves us in a position where there's just nobody applying. And I understand wanting to get out. I've thought about it myself. Um... Maybe if I write a book, <laughs> um, which I might actually, um, I've been getting, uh, wrapped up in, uh, uh, I've been getting wrapped up in, um, a method of note taking known as, uh, Zettelkasten, um, which was invented by, um, uh, a man by the name of, of Nicholas Lumen, um, there's a, uh, there's a very uh, enthusiastic and uh, charismatic gentleman on YouTube, uh, Scott Shepper, who is in the process of writing a book about the method. Um, and while he says he's almost finished with the book, um, I've already gone ahead and kind of started my own Zettelkasten, um, trying to mimic his style a little bit more, but, uh, organizing the categories for all the different index cards associated with the method, um, in a fashion that, um, uh, that supports more of a, uh, more of a Renaissance, uh, a medieval Renaissance Christian mindset. So, uh, with a possible expansion out to, um, to, uh, not expansion, but it allow the, the way I'm setting it up allows for flexibility, uh, depending on whether I find use, um, of, uh, Giordano, Giordano Bruno's, um, shadow of the ideas method. Uh, where he has these wheels of 30 categories and um, it's fractal. So you can go into any of the 30 and it has a sub 30 um, set of categories. But um, yeah, the, uh, the Zettelkasten method has some interesting, uh, some really interesting corollaries with uh, um, ideas behind the, uh, the art of memory that was very popular in medieval and Renaissance Europe. But anyhow, that's not what this video is about. <laughs> oh, and, um, you like my, uh, you like my symbol of hate? Yeah. Um, because, you know, a prayerful devotion is totally, totally a, symbol of hate. Um, uh, but this video is not even about the recent article in the Atlantic concerning how gun culture has co-opted the rosary. Uh, it's a, it's a ludicrous piece of writing and, uh, shame on the editors. 
Um, but anyhow, um, I figured that uh, from now on, uh, from now on, I'm going to. Um, from now on, I'm in. I'm going to have a rosary in my hand, or nearby, uh, when I decide to do these videos. I'm gonna switch it over to the left hand. Anyhow, uh, but no, what I uh, what I want to talk about in this video, as you could probably guess from the title, um, yeah, what the the last video I talked about, uh, Hildegard von Bingen. And, um, and her, uh, crystal healing, um, uh, basically church sanctioned crystal healing, um, in the Catholic tradition. Um, and I, and so to kind of give a, To kind of well, maybe not to preface. Again, these are going to all be unedited videos. I I I don't have the time to really go into um, the nitty gritty of editing. Um, anyhow, so recently, um, or every once in a while, I will um, I'll catch up with things uh, being covered by. Michael Voris and his team over at churchmilitant.com. Um, and yes, Michael Voris and his hair is nearly a crime against humanity, but I don't hold it against him. Uh, <laughs> and, and yes, uh, Michael can some, can, can often be quite, um, quite abrupt, quite abrasive, um, and, um, and, and definitely, uh, bombastic. Uh, but I, I, I can tell that everything he does, it comes from a place of love for God, love for the church, love for our lady and love for faithful Catholics who are just trying to get through this mortal coil uh, securely in the, within the bosom of the church, as as um, as Catholics often phrase it, um, and they have a show called Miked Up, and every once in a while uh, they'll have a, a guest on. That's it's really uh, quite fascinating to listen to. Uh, very informative. I always uh, always walk away from uh, from some of the mic'd up episodes um, with <laughs> with either a new book list or <laughs> or, um, or some interesting insights to consider when um, when tackling prayer life, the devotional life, um, and and just uh, approaching anything within the faith, uh, generally speaking. And a recent episode that I watched was an interview with uh, Father Mitch Pacwa, uh, who is a Jesuit, but we won't hold that against him for the time being, <laughs> um, who also happens to be in, uh, a personality on EWTN, but I won't hold that against him either. Um, I have a problem with both Jesuits and uh, EWTN, but that's a topic for a different video for a different channel. I think I'm not going to make a, I'm not going to make a second channel related to faith based things. Uh, that this this channel is going to try. I'm going to I'm trying to keep this channel focused as much as I can. Uh, but yes, so. It was an episode uh, that they were film that they did with uh, interviewing Father Mitch Pacwa, and the the subject was um, the New Age, which if you've seen, uh, if you've watched my other videos, you know I have a uh, a, a disdain for 
the new age, period. Um, I don't care what flavor of it it is. Um, I'm not. Uh, I'm not into the new age sensibilities related to the idea of a cosmic Christ. Um, I think the new age's uh, conception of a cosmic Christ is incorrect. Um, and to my mind, the only legitimate uh, conception of a cosmic Christ would be uh, St. Maximus the Confessor. Um, I have a copy of uh, Cardinal von Balthasar's um, uh, Cosmic Liturgy, which is uh, supposed to be a summation of the, uh, the theology and cosmology of uh, Maximus the Confessor. Um, I know th that some people have their issues with uh, von Balthasar, and I, I, I'm sure there are objections to some of his ideas. Um, and, you know, it, uh, um, uh, he's not a canonized saint, so, you know, his, his opinions, his conclusions are totally up to, um, totally within the, within the realm of, um, of debate. Um, some of the things that saints say, you know, that kind of, you, you kind of have to, uh, approach the, con the conclusions and the writings of saints, um, far more carefully than, uh, than you would someone who isn't canonized. Um, uh, especially as it relates to theology, which brings us to, um, crystals, <laughs> some uh, bear, bear with me. Um, so, you know, it, it was an hour long interview. Um, I watched it the whole way through and they made mention of a book that father Pacwa had written sometime in the nineties, um, which I happened to find it, it was really, it's really interesting. So, um, my father, um, had, uh, had gotten some more shelf space set up and, uh, he was going through his, uh, faith-based, uh, personal library, which, uh, currently <laughs> had been, which recently had been packed up in these massive boxes, massive boxes. He has a very, um, he has a quite an expansive, uh, eclectic Catholic faith-based library, uh, stemming from, you know, including all different subjects from questions about, uh, issues with liturgy issues with the second Vatican council, um, uh, ascetical, a few ascetical works, um, a few biographies of some of the popes, some of the saints, um, thing, things like that. And, um, and one of the books that he happened to have there that I caught a glimpse of was that was Father Pacwa's book, uh, Catholics and the New Age, uh, published in 1992. And, uh, yeah, within just a few days of us, um, unearthing it again from the boxes in the garage, um, this interview shows up in my recommended feed on YouTube. So I watched it and, uh, and yeah, they mentioned the book. Ah, uh, it, it, you know, it, it was, it was an interview. <laughs> um, and I, I agree with, I agree with father Pacwa, the, you know, the, the new age movement as it is, is to be avoided. Um, it, it appeals to the least common denominator. Um, it has an absolute disdain for, uh, any kind of spiritual hierarchy whatsoever. Um, it also leads to a sort of spiritual narcissism, um, where, uh, where one eventually assumes that they are God, uh, that 
that you are, you know, <laughs> just think of, of Oprah, you know, Oprah herself being kind of having helped foster um, a lot of new age elements in the gosh, throughout my childhood, my mom used to watch her all the time, but you know, she'd have Eckhart Toll. I call him Eckfart. Um, and, and she, you know, she'd have the, a lot of these, all these new age thinkers on her show and they would talk about, uh, new agey shit. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, just thinking in terms of over, it's like, oh, you are God and you get to be God and you're, God. everybody is God. Um, which of course is preposterous. There is one God. Now I understand the sentiment. It's like, oh, God is everywhere and he's in everything. Um, now I'm, I'm still working my way through, uh, Ludwig, Ott's, uh, Fundamentals of Catholic Dogma, which is a, a fantastic a little, well, not that it's little, but it's it's a it's a summary of Catholic dogma in a systematized way, uh, like a fractal way. You know, he has the he has the um, he'll express a dogma in a in a in a single line or, or two in in thick bold lettering. And then if you want to dive in deeper, um, he has smaller text that isn't bold and that explains the various positions of saints, popes, um, councils. You know, he, he references Denzinger's uh, source of Catholic dogma um, and works of saints and theologians and, and, and this, that, and the other thing. It, it's... Um, uh, my understanding is it's like a it's used as a textbook in seminaries, I believe. Um, it's out of print, actually. Uh, and given the given the current pontificate, and given the uh, the climate surrounding Pope Francis right now, uh, I can understand why Tan Books doesn't reprint it it could use another reprinting i think the last edition that they printed was in the mid late 90s but anyhow <clears throat> so um that was a uh, off the rails aside uh, related to uh pantheism uh which uh i Right now, I can't really get into that because I'm, um, again, I'm working my way through fundamentals of Catholic dogma um, so that, yeah, because I, <laughs> I'm getting ready to write something. I've, I just, I was in, received some kind of inspiration a number of months ago. And uh, another reason why I haven't put out a video is I've been wrestling with, um, with some incredibly vivid, um, absolutely incredibly vivid, uh, images that have been presented to me. I don't even, uh, I don't even want to say that it's visions because there is a possibility that it's just my imagination. Um, but the, the imagery was, it was so strong and it came out of nowhere. It was, um, that, that should, I think that that'll be a different, that'll be a video on its own and I'm getting too sidetracked and I need to bring it back in. <clears throat> so, um, I finished watching this interview with Father Pacwa about the new age and I'm sitting there nodding on, um, until he, un, until he gets to, um, until he gets to astrology and when he gets to astrology, that's when he gets to astrology and numerology, that's when I kind of get, I kind of stop nodding my head and listen a little closely. And then I catch myself going, uh, 
I don't know, Father. I don't know. That's uh, that's that's too too broad. Too broad a brush. Just remember, I loathe the new age. So when when I when I express my um, not dissatisfaction, but when when I express my skepticism about something a Jesuit has to say about uh, astrology and I'd and I'd say numerology, I kind of. Yeah, I, I take a, I have a nice big mountain of salt um, from which to draw infinite grains. <laughs> With every syllable uh, uh, any Jesuit would have related to those two subjects. Um, and many others, if I ever were to hear them talk about other things. But beside the point. But yes, yeah, so Father Paco gets into astrology and... Um, and, and of course what he's just, what he's describing, um, is, is the, is the new agey type of astrology where, oh, it's all psychology, but, um, and, and in the, 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 uh, conception that the new age seems to have is that there's, there's no free will. It, it's, impl- you know, they'll say, oh no, you have free will. But the 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 type of astrology that they ascribe to is it, it implicitly um, is opposed to the idea of free will, which, of course, as a Catholic must be, you know, has to be rejected. Um, otherwise, you are. Is that ma- formally or materially a heretic? I can't remember the distinction again beside the point. So, um, but yeah, so I watched this interview and yeah, you know, of course he, you know, as with all things new age, um, at some point you touch on crystals as much as you do on astrology and numerology. And, uh, yeah, he, uh, he, he really, uh, he really poo pooed crystals and, and and by poo pooed, I mean he even poo pooed crystals far and beyond what he clearly must be ignorant of. And and yes, New Age crystal mumbo jumbo is insane. It it literally is a sign of mental illness. However, to hear a Jesuit who is considered apparently in the Catholic sphere, at least I've never heard of this, but he's considered an expert on the new age. And I don't doubt that. Uh, I have, I have yet to actually read his book. I read the introduction, flipped through the bibliography, um, flipped through the glossary and, and uh, looking at how he uh, defines certain terms. Um, what else did I look at? Is that it? Yeah, yeah. I, I looked at the bibliography, I looked at the glossary, and then I read I looked table of contents and read the introduction. So I'm getting ready to read it. You know, I'm 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 gonna I'm I'm gonna read his book and and maybe I will do a commentary on it. Um uh or or maybe I will write a short response to it or make a video in response to his book. <clears throat> but um but yeah, so he, he poo-poos crystals um, as it's conceived of in the New Age, um, rightly so. But the, the, the way in which he did so in this interview really kind of struck me as far too heavy-handed. Because you would think a scholar of church teaching, his sh- he has a show on the EWTN, where he answers questions about theology. And you would think that he would have more of a, an, a more of a, an awareness of Hildegard von Bingen, who is a saint of the Catholic Church. She's never been she's never been decanonized. 
And as far as I've been able to find, none of Hildegard's books has ever been censured by the church. So for Father Pockwoods, it just kind of goes like, oh, crystals, yeah, you know, that's that stupid thing that the, the New Agers do. And yeah, the New Agers do do stupid things with crystals because they don't understand them. Um, they, they don't have proper formation. They don't understand, they don't have, uh, you know, they, they don't have an understanding of God and God's creation and all that stuff. So I decided, um, that it was a charitable thing to do to comment on the video. And I, I said, uh, I said, I said, um, thankfully for faithful Catholics who enjoy crystals, um, all they have to do is read Hildegard von Bingen's Physica and they will walk away with a Catholic understanding of, of precious stones. Um, and you know, she's got stuff in there about plants and trees and the elements and, um, and animals and the medicinal uses for all those things and, or the, and wondrous uses for those things. Cause the way that she talks about the, the way that she talks about the contents of her book is she, she talks uh, about them in terms of, of their powers, uh, their hidden virtues or to use technically uh, scholarly language, occult virtues. Um, you know, occult is a scientific term. I use it all the time in nursing. Um, you know, if someone is bleeding internally um, in their gastrointestinal tract, we refer to that as an occult bleed or an occult hemorrhage. And so the way that we test for it is, you know, the, the patient poops, and then we test the poop for occult blood because it's hidden, right? When you look at a stone, it's inherent virtues aren't apparent. Um, and so therefore in Hildegard's case, the only way to, the, there's, you know, a combination of two ways that one comes about this knowledge. One is through experimentation, uh, which I'd imagine she did based upon her understanding of nature, which she admittedly received mostly from her visions which brings up the, the second point to how she determined the use of these things, and that is by revelation. Now, initially, it was private revelation, which is perfectly acceptable within the Catholic tradition. In fact, some of the most, some of the most um, enlightening uh some of the most enlightening things that we've received from tradition come from what started out as private revelation. In fact, even though the, uh, even though the, uh, the totality of the church hierarchy was shut up in the upper room, after the ascension, um, and, and while they all, and while the apostles and the blessed Virgin may have received the Holy spirit at Pentecost collectively, they were shut up in a room. They were in private, private revelation. Now it became, it, you know, <laughs> it became public, through their ministry 
shortly after, you know, Peter's uh, first sermon, right? Um, and then later, um, it was it was recorded in Scripture. Um, and so, but before before the first sermon and before the gospel, before the uh, before the book of Acts was even written. That was an instance of private revelation. Again, shared collectively, but it was, it happened, it happened in private. And in this context, we're referring to the 12 apostles and Mary shut up in a room while the rest of the world is going about its business. Sounds pretty private to me, relatively speaking. Um, you might be able to see over here um, a few blue volumes peeking out of the city of God, the mystical city of God, which is a four-volume spiritual epic. And by epic, I don't mean like Homer. I mean, it's... it's uh, it, it it's a it's four volumes of what what initially was private revelation if you're wearing a miraculous medal that miraculous medal started off as a private revelation so this this i you know this idea that it's like oh well you know it's only private revelation it's like yeah it is only private revelation but at some point it might not be and god's the one that chooses which private revelations are fit for public use. And by public use, I mean by the church at large. So you don't know there, you could, you could have had, you, you may have had a grandma or a great grandma who had hun who had thousands, countless private revelations that occurred during, during her at throughout the course of her prayer life. Throughout the course of her dreams, every, for all you know, you, you have a family member at some point in history, if they were a faithful Catholic who received all kinds of private revelations, whether awake or asleep. And so, yeah, this, this, this idea that, um, you know, that private revelation should just be. You know, eh, it's just private revelations. Like, no, not all private revelations are suitable for the the public life of the church at large. And the church has has systems in place to vet certain private revelations, just in case it isn't genuinely of the Holy Spirit or from a saint or what have you. So in Hildegard von Bingen's case, she received private revelations. She wrote her visions down. And her visions informed her medical practice, her faith healing practice. Which unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately for the modern for, for the modern Catholic Unfortunately, Hildegard von Bingen's medical practice would look like witchcraft by today's modern standards. And the modern standard today being something akin to, you know, your your um, internet witchy influencer chicks with their cutesy little happy music in the background of their YouTube videos where they, you know, where they talk about, I was like, Oh, my wonderful superstitions. Um, but in Hildegard von Bingen's case, all of it was informed by revelation, private revelation, but revelation that the church in canonizing her agrees with. Because otherwise they wouldn't have canonized her. If if the writing of Physica is um, if if her book 
physica is heresy uh, and offensive to pious ears, then the issue is with the person who's offended by it, not with the fact that Hildegard is a canonized saint. So I, you know, I shared a brief comment, you know, reassuring those Catholics who enjoy, um, who enjoy crystals, the beauty of crystals, um, or who may have started getting ensnared by the lures of the new age, uh, you know, in case Father Pacwa's argument of oh, crystals bad because new age, <laughs> You know, if they were put, if they were galvanized to continue to pursue crystals, despite his broad brush sort of poo poo, um, I figured it was worth offering those Catholics, um, you know, a way to restore their proclivity to crystals in Christ, because we're supposed to restore all things in Christ. Hildegard von Bingen gives us the means with which we can restore a proper conception of crystals and help restore, you know, it, restore creation in Christ, you know, restore all things. Ah, and uh, if, if, for those of you who don't watch Church Militant or don't follow Church Militant, um, their comment section can be very uh, gritty. <laughs> um, there, there are some, there are some Catholics, uh, a majority of Catholics who subscribe to their website um, and consume their content tend to be um, Bible thumping Catholics. And, you know, maybe there is a way for, for a Catholic to be a Bible thumper, um, if they have well formed, a well formed virtue of prudence, Cause, you know, yeah, you want, you know, you want to be, you want to be honest and truthful about what scripture says and about what the church fathers say and about what, what the saints say about things, you know, in, in a way that's loving, not in a way that's <laughs> told you so. Um, but unfortunately with many of the, with many of the people who watch church militant, they tend to be sort of the <laughs> told you so type Catholics or, or the, uh, I was like, oh, if you say anything, you're a heretic. <laughs> um, and so I figured I would share with you all, um, a response that I got from my comment that I think illustrates um, sort of it illustrates something that Tom Berg in Meditations on the Tarot kind of touched on in one of the letters in the book um, when diagnosing what Christianity kind of has to do in order to in in order to remain uncorrupted, you know. But yes, the the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Um, but like the 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 you know the physical manifestation of the church can certainly come crumbling down. Um. But anyhow, <clears throat> so in response to my, my comment, I offered in charity to those who may be on the precipice of falling into the new age, thanks to Father Pacwa's simplistic rhetoric, um, I got this response. I'm not going to say the username. Quote, no, 
honest and true Catholic abides by the deceit of crystals. If they do, they cannot be called devout. <sighs> um... So that, that, um, it, that, uh, yeah, I, I think that illustrates, um, that, that illustrates an issue that exists in the Catholic church in, and a lot of the people who are subscribers to church militant and to the remnant, um, and, and to, uh, and to a lot of other, um, uh, heavily conservative, traditional, uh, Catholic, uh, uh, media apostolates, <clears throat> they tend to be individuals that are very concerned about the, the encroachment of modern, of, of modernism into the church. Uh, right. And, and I, and I completely share their concern. Uh, I am concerned about the the tr the the drudge of modernism seeping into what's supposed to be the white raiment of the mantle of Holy Mother Church. And but the the prudence <laughs> goes out the window. Critical thinking goes out the window. Um, because, because people identify themselves with their beliefs. Um, and so when you attack their beliefs, they, you know, they, they take it personally. Um, and they tend to take it personally in a way that they complain about the way in which, um, Progressives, SJWs, Karens tend to re respond. It, it's quite fascinating, you know. Yeah, the progressives often are um, maligned as being uh, mentally immature. Um, and go figure, they're progressive, uh, is usually the, the line of thinking. Uh, there's even a book. There's even there, there's a four, 400, 500 page book written by a psychologist that basically lays out the argument as to why progressives are psychologically immature and mal, mal psychologically malformed or what have you. Uh, um, but I would wager that you can find the very same thing amongst conservatives. And I'd say that this, uh, this comment was um kind of, it was in that vein so i took a moment to collect myself because <laughs> i wanted to as soon as i got it i and read it you know you, you get that you, know, you get that punch to the gut that like stings your pride and 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 you just want to go -uh, how do you, you have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> And, uh, so I figured, well, clearly I am not in a, an emotional position to, uh, to say anything constructive to counter her argument. So I, I quoted St. Hildegard. <laughs> I quoted the, a section at the beginning of her chapter on precious stones, where she explains why they possess inherent powers, inherent virtues, hidden virtues, occult virtues. Oh my God. A Catholic saint talking about the occult. Ah. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, she even starts, Hildegard even starts the chapter saying that the devil abhors, detests, 
precious stones. Now makes so then you know you think I was like well but if he but if the devil hates crystals then why why do the servants of Satan use crystals? Servants of Satan being what what these type of reactionary Catholics like to call people who are part of the New Age. Um, well, the answer is actually quite simple. Because Satan cannot corrupt creation itself, like the, the, the devil cannot corrupt the nature and essence of creation, And creation is good, right? That's what, you know, God God looked upon his creation and saw that it was good. It's right there in Genesis. So because creation is ontologically good, then, um, then the thing that this devil can do, rather than, um, rather than corrupting, the crystals themselves is he can corrupt the, he can corrupt man's understanding of the crystals and of Nate and of creation. You know, you know, we're, we're talking about crystals, but you know, these, these ideas can apply to creation generally. So you have, so the so the devil instead he attacks man's understanding of creation so that man perceives uh, or misperceives creation for what it actually is to the point where then man um, uses creation in a in a way that is antithetical to glorifying God or worshiping God or praying. Um, <clears throat> which is, uh, which I would assume is the basis for most superstitions. You know, superstition isn't the, the thing that makes superstition bad. Isn't, isn't that the, the cre isn't that the, um, the items used themselves are, corrupt it's the um it's the disposition of the individual because what uh which commandment is it that superstition breaks it's the first commandment it's thou you know thou shalt have no other gods before me um and the main the main issue with superstition is that it, it diverts one's faith in God to faith in creation um, or faith in whatever you fancy. You know, if, if you put your faith in whatever you fancy, then you're breaking the first commandment and committing possible superstition. But that's not, you know, so Hildegard isn't talking about superstitions surrounding stones and crystals. She's explaining why they have inherent, uh, why they have inherent powers. And she uses the word powers to describe how it is these crystals or stones affect uh, some sort of change. So right off the bat, you know, the devil hates crystals. Okay. Um, you know, and then I offer, uh, you know, I, I include a few other snippets that to kind of, to, <clears throat> to, uh, you know, it, to best showcase Hildegard's case for the, for the use of crystals as medicine. And then her reply, 
Her reply was, quote, I'm not about to read your rambling, nonsensical response, and you asked me a question I will ask you. Have you read your Bible? I mean the real one, the Douay Reims, not some New Age BS written by those who make themselves gods. Ugh. <sighs> I did, I did, I did respond. I did respond to that. Um, you know, I was like, yes, I, I do. And, and it is a Douay Reims. In fact, she's right there. Ooh. Yeah. That wasn't a good idea, but yeah, the Douay Reims right there. <clears throat> um, however, um, and, and yes, the, the New Age stuff is BS. And yes, there is New Age BS stuff written by those who make themselves gods. She, so she, either she did read it or, but it, it doesn't seem like she did read. So, you know, I, I even included the site, you know, at the end of the quote, I put the citation. Hildegard von Bingen's Physica. I put the page number and yes, the, the, the pub, the publisher, the publisher is, uh, healing arts press. And, you know, I have another one of their, another one of their books. It's, um, it's a, it's a book on spagyric medicine, um, which is, you know, based on the, uh, the understanding of, um, uh, the Paracelsian uh, understanding of what alchemy is and what medicine is and things like that, which, you know, I don't hear anybody complaining about the anesthetic that they receive during surgeries. So, you know, clearly something good came from um, Paracelsus and his uh, alchemical philosophy and theology, which uh, I'm not an expert on. Um, maybe someday I'll really dig into it, but I'm just just saying um the that uh you know uh what am i saying I'm getting sidetracked again but yes so and, and i mentioned at the end of my citation that it's like okay yes it's healing arts press yeah they produce a few um they, they produce a few books that you know you can probably turn your nose up at and you can kind of tell that it may be new agey but this edition of the Physica is the only edition in English that exists. And unfortunately, my Latin is not that great. If existent, <laughs> like I can, I can read it. I, I can read like I can, I can, I can pick out certain words. I can pick out some of the grammar. Uh, and I, I, I can do ecclesiastical pronunciation like there's no tomorrow, but, um, I would never, I would never attempt to <clears throat> try to read f to comp for comprehension, um, a text straight from the Latin. Cause I just don't have the ability. And so, you know, unfortunately I am relying on an English translation. It's the only one healing arts presses edition of Hildegard von Bingen's Physica is the only English translation that currently exists on the market that I have been able to find. If any of you know an edition of this book that's in English from a Catholic publisher, please let me know. I would love to, I would love to have a copy. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, there, there was, uh, there was a guy that had commented before I put my quote and he's like, do you know your Bible? Have you heard of the temple high priest and his breastplate? Um, I think Hildegard makes mention of that. Um, so I, I don't know. She must've mistaken me for that other guy. Um, if it even is a she, uh, but yeah, I was like, 
yeah, I do. And it's a Douay Reims. And excuse me, but my reply was textural evidence of a Catholic saint explaining how to properly understand and use crystals. She's canonized. You're not. And if she says the devil hates crystals and they possess occult powers, then who are we to question a saint of the church who received revelation? <sighs> this, so th this is just, I guess this is just a, you know, it's not really getting, I know this video is not really getting into the nitty gritty of Catholic, genuine Catholic crystal healing via, you know, uh, per Hildegard von Bingen, but um, I felt like this was an in, an incident to help illustrate um, kind of where, where we, where the, church stands as far as what it's willing to admit publicly um, with, you know, Father Pacwa and this interview on Mike Up uh, being an example of where he's, you know, he poo-poos crystals outright. Well, yeah, the, the new age conception of crystals is definitely not, uh, not kosher. But think about how that then is perceived by the Catholic lady. Um, this exam, the, and this, this example of this in this individual who, who is falling into the same trap as the King James only crowd of evangelicals, <laughs> You know, we're, we're, we've reached a we've reached a point in in modern Catholicism where the traditionalists are starting to behave like prodies, um, as and the evangelical prodies at that, and that's that's not good. That's that's not good at all, um, because as we all know, evangelical Protestantism might as might as well just be as bad as the new age, in my opinion. <clears throat> um, but of, but of course a servant of the antichrist would say that. Um, yes. Yeah, so, uh, so for, for those, uh, for those lay Catholics or, or clergy, um, as I know, uh, Father, or as I as I know, uh, Augustino Tomaturgo is, uh, or uh, was a consecrated bishop in sort of the traditionalist scene for a number of years. But uh, but you know, for those of us who are, I under I I think I can I, I'm I understand um, Tomaturgo's dilemma that he faces when he gets some of the replies to his blog, uh, like, uh, uh, that, that he does. And, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely, it, it's definitely an eye opener because you, because as, as a, as a Catholic who is interested in philosophy and metaphysics and, and things when, you know, when you start to actually read, works of metaphysics, um, especially by those philosophers that the church accepts as authoritative, um, despite the fact that they were Gentiles, you know, your Plato, Aristotle, um, a handful of the Stoics, you know, you, you read, you, you read these works and you can't help but sense it's like, huh, I, I come across a lot of this stuff too. In, whenever you hear talk about Thelema, and like, why is that? Um, and you know, you just go to this, you go to the source material, and the source material is Plato, Aristotle, Averroes, um, you know, uh, the 
your your platonics your neoplatonics your aristotelians your stoics um they all play like their their philosophy their metaphysics all played a part in helping christians understand and come to and come to know what of god we know through the light of natural reason as thomas aquinas would say um in fact i would argue with without without the classic philosophers of ancient greece and rome we wouldn't have theology at all because i'm not aware of I am not aware of pre-Christian Judaism having any dissertations on um, on the you know what makes oneness good you, you know the whole like the monad oh the monad that the um, that uh, that Socrates goes on about and stuff and um, you know you just as far as, as you know as far as the textual record shows we don't have any evidence of um of any heavy theology or metaphysics present in uh first temple judaism but we certainly have evidence of it in second temple and post temp and post second temple rabbinical judaism um you know and people was like well well there's the kabbalah and it's like well Unfortunately, the Kabbalah, you know, is a mishmash of a whole bunch of different things, um, post Second Temple Judaism, Rabbinical Judaism, and the things that they absorbed over time. And, you know, the earliest textual references to the Sephirot and all that stuff that we have is, what, uh, 10th century? A little bit earlier than that? Um, you know, you don't, you don't see any of that in uh, earlier, earlier than, than 10th. 10th 9th century so you know the, the 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 nuance of metaphysics and everything i understand is not for everybody and clement of alexandria was right there are two types of faith there is uh there is pistis which is blind faith um which can be good right you know, if its object is, you know, if the object of that faith is God and the Trinity, that's, it's fine. You know, you, you bear those people, you tolerate them. Um, you know, you don't have to worry about whether they agree with you on your metaphysics because their blind faith keeps them within the bosom of the church. And, and, and that's fine. But, you know, for the, for individuals who are more intellectual clement in clement illustrates another type of faith i forget exactly what he called it um but it's basically textbook esotericism it's basically esoteric christianity and and in this context esoteric meaning f it is for the few it's you know there's faith in the Trinity. There's, you know, there's profession of the creed, but the, you know, but the knowledge and understanding of the Trinity and of the faith is, is, um, is of a, is of a higher degree of knowledge that really is truly only shared by a few. Um, and that's, that is esoteric. That's what, that's basically the definition of esoteric. The difference between Christian esotericism and the esotericism of other groups like Thelema or whatever, um, or you know Mithraism and or Manichaeism or uh, or the other cults that were kind of out and about in those times and even into today, the the, the difference is that for for the Christian faith, the 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 Christian who ascribes to blind faith to pistis 
has just as much an opportunity and has all the graces afforded to them um, that God is willing to bestow on them just as much as the esoteric Christian has of getting to heaven, of realizing the beatific vision. You know, it doesn't matter whether you, whether you have a higher understanding of God than Joe Schmo in the, in the pews up front. <laughs> um, you're, you know, you both have an equal opportunity to get into heaven or hell, depending on how you live your life. Whereas in, in other esoteric circles, you know, it, it, there is a hierarchy. And if you don't know the things they know, you're not in. And God forbid that you don't come to full realization, because if you don't, then you won't reap the benefits. You know, that's, that's the difference. That's the difference. So, and that's why I don't shy away from using terms like esoteric Christianity or esoteric Catholicism. Man, let me tell you, just any, any, any cleric who is, uh, who is a theologian or even laity who are theologians, they're base, they're basically practicing esoteric, esoteric Catholicism because their, their faith and their understanding of the faith and their understanding of God is much higher than that of the, of the regular everyday lay Catholic. And that's okay because everybody has as much opportunity to get into heaven within the church as any other person, regardless of their level of understanding. And that's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Ah, <sighs> I don't think there's much else that I can really say. I just wanted to share the, share that tidbit with you and kind of comment on it. Um, yep. <laughs> uh, I don't know when I'll get another video out. I'm going to try to pick it up and uh, try to put out some more stuff because I now have higher speed internet. And that was another bottleneck that I was facing. Um, I just, the, at the time that I first was uploading there, I had absolutely no bandwidth whatsoever since I live in the middle of the countryside. Um, but now I have high speed internet, so I will, I will, I have no, um, I, I shouldn't have too ter too much more, I shouldn't have too restrictive of a bottleneck now like I did before. So, you know, if there are any of you who do enjoy watching these things, which, you know, I don't really pay attention all that much to the stats on this channel because, again, this channel is more of like a, a journal diary sort of thing for myself first. Um, but uh, for those who find... Um, for those who find novelty in it, or for those who, um, uh, for those who may be experiencing a similar journey or are in a similar kind of part of their life where they're thinking about these kinds of things, you know, maybe, maybe these videos can help you, but first and foremost, it's just a, it's just a video journal for myself and it, uh, it's a secondary benefit if anyone else, uh, enjoys it. And if you do, thank you you know, um, and it, it, if, you know, the whole, the whole doobly do thing down below, you know, like subscribe, click the bell icon. If you want to keep up with the next time I'm upload a video, which, you know, if it's going to be a while between videos because of life, not so much because of internet, then yeah, maybe you do want to have the notification bell on, um, I don't know. It's up to you. Um, I love you all. Uh, peace be with you. Uh, may God grant you many graces. Uh, and I will, will, uh, we'll talk again sometime soon. Bye. And the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>